Welcome to iLecture Online, and here we have another nice example of how to calculate the forces, the tensions, and the moments of a particular situation. Now, in this case, there won't be any moments because you can see that attached, there's nothing attached to the wall between the beam and the wall itself. There's a wheel there that's taking the, the pressure or the force of the beam being pulled against the wall, being held in place right there. Notice we have a 100 pound weight at the very end of the beam. The beam is 30 inches long. It's connected with a cable here 10, 10 inches away from the edge, pulling in that direction. We have a second cable 20 inches away from the edge, pulling in this direction. Notice that this cable is attached 10 inches above where this wheel is being pushed against the wall. And at the bottom here, this cable is attached to this particular location 12 inches below that point right there. We're trying to find the tension in this cable, the tension is this cable, and the reaction force right here between the wheel and the wall. Since it's a wheel and there's no friction involved there, the force must be directly perpendicular to the uh, surface of the wall, so therefore there's only one direction of the force right there. Okay, how do we do that? Well, again, we use the equations that the sum of all the forces in the x direction must add up to zero, and the sum of all the forces in the y direction must add up to zero. In this particular point, since we're not trying to calculate the moment right there, we probably don't want to say that the sum of all the moments add up to zero, because that has no benefit for that point right there. We could potentially use it for any other thing right there on, on the problem, but I think we can get away with just using those two equations alone. Let's find out if we're correct here. All right, to do that, we do need to find the vertical and horizontal components of T1 and T2. So what we can do here is we can say, well, we have two angles. We have this angle right here. Let's call that theta sub 1. We have another angle right here. Let's call it theta sub 2. What we can say is that the sine of the angle, let me go ahead and, and write it right here. So we say that the sine of angle theta sub 1 is equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. So that's equal to the ratio of the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. And of course, the opposite side here, that would be 10 inches, and the hypotenuse would be the length of the cable. So it would be 10 divided by the hypotenuse. Now, to find the hypotenuse, we use Pythagorean theorem. We can see that this side is 20 inches, that side is 10 inches, so the hypotenuse can be found by taking 10 inches squared uh, plus 20 inches squared, that would be the square root of 500, or 22.4 inches. So this is right as 22.4 inches. So that would be the sine of the angle theta uh, sub 1, and the uh, cosine of the angle. So the cosine of theta sub 1 would be equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And of course, the adjacent side would be 20 inches. Hypotenuse would be 22.4. So there... Uh, that would be the ratio right there. We could just leave it as a ratio at this moment. We can do the same for theta sub 2. We can say that the sine of theta sub 2 is equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. And the opposite to this angle right here would be 12 inches. And the hypotenuse would be found by taking Pythagorean theorem. We're trying to find this side right here. We have 10 inches and 12 inches. So it would be 100 plus 144. Take the square root of that, and we get 15.6. That would be the hypotenuse of that cable right there, 15.6 inches. And so therefore, the cosine of the angle theta sub 2, the cosine would be the adjacent side, which would be uh, adjacent divided by the hypotenuse, which is equal to 10 divided by 15.6. So rather than calculating the angles like we did in the previous problem, we'll simply go ahead and find the ratios of the various sides to find the sine and the cosine of those two angles. All right, so now we were able to find T1x and T1y. So let me go ahead and use a different color. Uh, let's see here, let's use orange. Let's see if orange shows up. So we have the uh, <coughs> T1 in the x direction. We have T1 in the y direction. Here we have T2 in the x direction. And we have T2 in the y direction. All right, let's just find the magnitudes only, not the direction yet. And let's see what we get. Okay, T1x. So T1 in the x direction is equal to T1 times the cosine of theta sub 1, which is equal to, well, we don't know what T1 is, so it's T1 times the cosine of theta sub 1. That would be 20 
divided by 22.4, and we get 0 0.8. Oh, let me try that again. Uh, that would be 20 divided by 22.4, and we get 0 0.893. So that would be equal to uh, 0 0.893 times T1. Uh, let me go ahead and write in a slightly better format. So that would be 0 0.893 times T1. Okay, T1 in the y direction is equal to T1 times the sine of theta sub 1, which is equal to the sine of theta sub 1 would be 10 divided by 22.4, and that would be 0 0.446 T1. All right, how about T2 in the x direction? That's equal to T2 times the cosine of theta sub 2. The cosine of theta sub 2 is 10 divided by 15.6. 10 divided by 15.6. So we get 0 0.641 times T2. And finally, T2 in the y direction equals T2 times the sine of theta sub 2. And the sine of theta sub 2 is 12 divided by 15.6. And we get 0 0.769 times T2. So now we have the four components of the two tensions of uh, the two cables involved in holding the load there. All right, now I think we're ready to start using these equations right here. So let's add up the sum of all the forces in the x direction. So the sum of all the forces in the x direction is equal to, so we have T1 in the x direction, that's a positive because it's to the right, so it'd be zero uh, point 893, 893 uh, times T1. Um, and then we have a positive plus uh, T2x, which would be plus 0 0.641 times T2. And then we have minus F2, and that, of course, adds up to 0, because that's an in equilibrium. Then what else do we have? Well, we have the sum of all the forces in the y direction. That also has to add up to zero. So we have the positive T1. That would be T1 um, in the y direction. That would be 0 0.446 T1. 0 0.446 T1. We have in the negative direction T2, which is uh, minus, I should say y direction, minus 0 0.769 times T2. And finally, we have a negative 100 pounds, negative 100 pounds, and all that adds up to zero as well. Now, here we may have a little bit of a problem because I have one, two, three unknowns and only two equations. So it looks like I am going to need one more thing. I'm going to need the sum of all the moments, the sum of all the moments adding up to zero as well. And that's it terrible looking sum, summation sign. There we go, that's better. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this point and add up all the moments caused by the three forces, the 100 pounds, the T1 in the y direction, and the T2 in the y direction cause a moment about this point. All right, so let's do that. The sum of all the moments is equal to, we have 100 pounds causing a counterclockwise direction with a distance of 10, uh, that would be 30 inches. So, yeah, we'll leave it as inches. So we have 100 pounds, and it would be positive times the distance of 30 inches. Okay, that gives us a positive torque in this direction. We have a negative torque caused by T1y, so it would be minus T1y, which is minus 0 0.446 times T1 times the distance of and that would be a distance of 20 inches. And then we have plus, because this causes a counterclockwise torque, so it would be plus T2y, which is plus 0 0.769 T2 times a moment arm of 10 inches, so times 10 inches, that. And of course, all that has to add up to zero. So now we have three equations and three unknowns. Now we're certain to find both T1 and T2 and, as well, F2. All right. So let's take these two equations because those are the only two that have only the two unknowns T1 and T2 in it. So T1, T2, we have T1 and T2 right here. <coughs> Excuse me. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve for T1 
out of this equation, then plug that in here to find T2 in the second equation. So let's go ahead and do that. So over here, we're going to isolate T1. So we're going to write T1 is equal to, moving this to the other side, we get a positive 0 0.769 times T2, plus when we move the 100 pounds across, plus 100 pounds, and if we have to divide by the coefficient of T1 right here, so divide the whole thing here by 0 0.446. All right, so simplifying that, we get 0.769 divided by 0.446. So we get this is equal to 1.724 T2 plus 100 divided by 0.446, and we get plus 224. So now what we have is, we can write like this, T1 is equal to 1.724 T2 plus 224. All right. All right, now that we've found the value for T1 in terms of T2, we can plug that into our second equation right here to find T2. So starting with this right here on the left side of the equation, multiply 10 times this, we get 7.69, and that would be uh, 7.69 times T2 equals, now moving this to the other side, it becomes minus uh, 30, 30 times 100, which would be 3,000, minus 3,000. And then moving this over the other side, we get 20 times this. So we get uh, minus, goes across, becomes a plus. So we get plus uh, 20 times 446. Well, we'll just leave it like this, 0 0.446. Multiply times 20, 20, not 200. And then multiplying that times what T1 is equal to, which is this right here, which is 1.724 times T2 plus 224. So we replaced T1 by what T1 is equal to. All right, now we have an equation that we can solve for T2. Simplifying this, we get 7.69 T2 is equal to minus 3,000. And then here we have uh, 0.446 times 1.724 times 20. Let me do it again. Uh, 0.446 times 20 times 1.724. And we get uh, 115 point, uh, let's see, that would be plus 15.383. 38 times T2, and then multiply this times this, so we get plus 0.446 times 224, and multiply times 20, and we get plus, uh, that would be 2,000, plus 2,000. All right, so now we move all the T's to one side, all the numbers to the other side. So then coming up here, we have on the left side, 7.69 T2, move that across, minus 15.38 times T2 is equal to a minus 3,000 and a plus 2,000. All right, so we have 7.69 minus 15.38. So we have minus 7.69 T2 is equal to minus 1,000, or T2 is equal to 1,000 divided by 7.69, that would be 130. So T2 is 130, and of course, that would be in terms of pounds. I like to put an S on there, don't need to. So now we have a value for T2. We know that's equal to 130 pounds. So now we can find T1. So T1 is equal to 1.724 times T2, which is 130 pounds. Add that to 224. And so we have T1 is equal to... So times 1.724 and add that to 224. So it's equal to 448 pounds. Oop, keep putting the S on there. Okay, so now we have a value for both T1 and T2 right here. The only thing left to do is find the value for F sub X. Now we know that F sub X coming up here is going to be equal to I'm sorry, <clears throat> come back over here. This is F2, this should have been F sub X. All right, 
So my notation got me a little confused here. But anyway, this f sub x is this f sub x right there. So we're trying to find f sub x. We know values for t1 and t2. That means taking this equation and coming over here with the last little bit of space I have, I can say that f sub x, when I move that to the other side of the equation, is equal to 0 0.893. 893 times t1, which is 448 pounds, plus 0 0.641, 0 0.641 times t2, and t2 is equal to 130 pounds. And so finally, we get 0 0.893 times 448 plus 0 0.641 times 130. And that gives me a total of 483 pounds. 483 pounds would be the force that the wall exerts back on the beam right here, at least on the wheel that's holding the beam. Of course, writing that in vector format, we can say that F sub X is equal to minus 483 pounds in the I direction. So that would be the vector quantity of that force. And that's how we find the various forces that act on both the cables and the reactionary force on the wall. Notice there's no moment at the wall right here because it's connected via wheel, so there's only uh, perpendicular forces to the wall. We did have to use the equations of some of the moments about that point caused by the other three forces right here, the two vertical components plus 100 pound force in order to find all three of the unknowns. But that's how we apply that technique of summing up all the force in the x direction, all the force in the y direction, and all the moments about a particular point useful to find the third unknown. And that's how it's done.